Hello. Hello. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming to this session. Uh, I am Dinin from Intel and uh, Shiran from Microsoft Research. And in this session, we will share some work about accelerating deep learning on Apache Spark using Big DL with cost grained scheduling. And I will um, talk about how Big DL reduce the communication and the synchronization cost, where Shiran will introduce how Big DL reduce the Spark uh, scheduling overhead. First, I would like to give a brief introduction of Big DL. Um, Big DL is a um, deep learning framework, and it's for Apache Spark. It's a um, unified platform. Um, with Big DL, you can um, create a pipeline to do the data preparing, uh, the feature engineering, and uh, training your model. Uh, it has been open sourced um, uh, at the 2016, and it has feature parity with other popular deep learning frameworks uh, like Torch and uh, TensorFlow. It also is compatible with other deep learning framework models. So if you have a um, pre-trained TensorFlow, Torch, or Cafe, or Kairos models, and you want to do the inference or the or do some fine tune in a distributed way, you can use Big Deal. Um, Big Deal has um, high performance, as we have leveraging Intel mass kernel library to do the mass operations. And uh, actually, in single node, it, the performance is comparable with TensorFlow on GPU. And Big Deal is also can be efficiently scaled as Big Deal um, performs uh, efficient or reduced uh, synchronization. Um, Big Deal supports Jupyter and uh, Zeppelin notebooks, and it also supports TensorBoard. Um, you may know TensorBoard is a virtualization tool developed by Google, and uh, it can help you better understand your deep learning models. Uh, Intel team has worked with many companies to run Big Deal on their platforms uh, or cloud services. Um, actually, Big Deal has been added to create Unicax C suite, and Big Deal is also listed on AWS market, uh, AI marketplace as well as Azure marketplace. And Intel team also worked with many companies to build analytics pipelines. And uh, um, in this summit, we have some talks about these solutions. Um, analytics Zoom is another open source project developed by Intel. It's um, analytics and AI pipelines for Spark and Big Deal. Um, it's out of the box ready for use. It reference several, uh, many user cases like flaw detection, time series predi uh, prediction, and it also has many predefined models like object detection, image classifications, and it also has um, lots of Im feature transformations, including three dimensional imaging, and it also provides high level APIs. So you can use data frames and uh, ML pipelines in Analytics Zoo. And we will have our first release in the next few days. Um, Big Deal get excellent multi-node scaling and generational performance with your existing hardware. We can see the left chart it's um, about the node scaling with Big Deal, and we can see there is up to 92% increase in the throughput from eight nodes to 16 nodes. And the right chart 
is about the generational performance increased with big deal. And uh, we can see there is um, up to 72% increase in the throughput if you run on Intel scalable processor over the previous generations. So why big deal has, the, ha, has high scalability? Let's first take a look at how deep learning training process looks like. Um, deep learning training process is an interactive process. Uh, in each iteration, it will compute the gradients and then it will update the weights. And in the next iteration, it will compute the gradients again and update the weights. And then compute the gradients again and update the weights. So when you stop update your grade, uh, so when you stop compute your gradients, your training is finished and you will get a trained models. Let's look, uh, let's take a look at uh, what deep learning jobs runs on Spark looks like. At the beginning of each iteration, the mask code will generate and uh, launch a series of Spark tasks. And these tasks will be running on the, uh, on the worker to compute the gradients. And then these gradients are, are need to be aggregated and then the aggregated gradients will be used to update your model. Uh, here is the procedure code. Assuming you need to iterate n times, and at the beginning of each iteration, you will first get a batch of your data, and then we will use the backward propagation through time to compute the gradients. And then we will do the aggregation, and at last, we will use a um, predefined optimization method to update your weight. Uh, this is um, what it looks like in Spark ML library. So at each iteration, the driver will broadcast the weights to each worker and the worker will compute the gradients. After that, each worker will send the gradients back to driver. And now, the driver is able to collect all the gradients collect, uh, computed by the cluster. And the driver is able to do the aggregation and it can use the aggregation uh, uh, gradients to compute the weights. Um, here we can see if we increase the work numbers in your cluster, the data transferred to your driver will be linearly increased. Um, and the driver will become the bottleneck as um, due to the limitation of network bandwidth and uh, the CPU cost of merging the results. Um, and Spark uh, has already provided uh, the tree aggregation and uh, tree reduce to improve this. Um, but uh, still there is hot spot in the synchronization system and um, which will limit the scalability. So what we do in big deal? In big deal we perform um, all reduce synchronization and during the synchronization, there is no hotspot and there is no shuffle. We can see here, at the beginning of each iteration, similar to Spark ML library, it, the driver will create and generate a series of Spark tasks, and these Spark tasks will compute the gradients. But after the gradient is computed, instead of sending the gradients back to driver, they will be exchanged and updated between the workers. And uh, similarly, the weight is also updated um, on each worker and also exchanged. And we can see here, during the synchronization, there is no centralized node, and the mask node is not involved. Um, let's talk a, a bit more about the all reduced synchronization in big deal. 
in big deal. Um, we implemented a um, parameter server architecture on top of Spark Block Manager. And the Spark Block Manager is a um, distributed memory cache system. And the parameter server is used to exchange data um, between the workers. Um, here we can see um, there, uh, after, after each worker computer the gradients. The gradients will be sliced into chunks. And the chunk number is the same with your work numbers. Assume there are three workers in your cluster, the gradient will be sliced into three chunks. And uh, each trunk is represented by a um, different color. So after we slice the gradient into chunks, these chunks will be exchanged through the parameter server. And after the exchange, each worker is able to get one part of the gradient that is computed by the cluster. For example, for the blue worker, not only it will get the blue gradient computed by itself, it will also be able to get the yellow gradient and the, uh, 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 sorry, um, the, uh, the blue worker will not only get the gradient computed by itself, it will also be able to get the blue gradients computed by the worker, uh, by the yellow worker and the green worker. And uh, now the blue worker will be able to have the blue gradients computed by all, all, the, no, all the workers in the cluster, and uh, similar to the yellow worker and the green worker. And uh, now the, uh, the blue worker has the uh, updated gradient, and it's able to be up update the weight based on the aggregated gradient. And here, weight is only a part of the weight because it's computed by part of the gradient. And this time, the weight will be exchanged through the parameter server. And after the exchange, all, uh, the blue worker will grab the, the, um, the yellow weight and the green weight computed by other nodes. So, now the blue worker is able to get the complete updated weight, and similar to yellow, the yellow worker and the green worker. So at the last, each worker on the cluster is able to get the uh, complete and updated weights. And the cool thing about the all reduced synchronization is even you uh, even you increase your worker numbers in your Sorry. Even if you increase the worker numbers in your cluster, the data transferred on each worker will, will be the same as more workers, more chunks, and less data in each chunk. So here is the test result. We have um, raw inception v1, which is one of the most popular neural network models on different uh, on different number of nodes. And um, the, here, here is the chart. The x, y axis is the node numbers, where the y axis is the parameter synchronization time as a fraction of average computing time. And we can see, even if you increase the node numbers, here we increase the node number by, two, by twice. But uh, the increase in parameter synchronization time only increase 1%. So big deal is uh, can be highly, uh, is, is can be efficiently scaled. Uh, okay, next um, uh, that's that's all. all we that's uh, how big deal performs the uh, synchronization in big deal. And the next, Shimon we will introduce how big deal um, to reduce the Spark task scheduling overhead. Thanks, Ding. So in the earlier part of the talk, you saw how uh, communication in terms of parameter synchronization could actually be improved by having this parameter manager that m reduces the overhead, especially as we scale the computation. In this second part of the talk, I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about the task scheduling overhead. 
And this graph here presents a motivation for doing this work, which is that this is the graph that we got after we applied all of the parameter manager improvements that you saw before. And this sort of tracks what is the task scheduling overhead as we increase the number of cores uh, to go up to uh, around like 400 or more cores. And uh, we see that the task scheduling overhead is around like 10 to 12% of the overall iteration time uh, for the Inception V1 uh, model that we are training out here. So in order to address this, I'm going to dive a little bit more deeper into how exactly these task scheduling overheads creep in and what are some of the techniques that we can use in order to address them. And if a number of you are wondering what these task scheduling overheads refer to, uh, if you've ever seen the Spark UI and sort of looked at how the stage time gets broken down, there are usually these colored bars that show you uh, some portions called a scheduler delay and task deserialization time. And it's a collection of all of these things that we call as the uh, scheduling overhead uh, in, an, in existing uh, Spark installations. So to do this, let's take a more closer look inside the scheduler and uh, take a look at what are some of the actions that are performed uh, while we want to run a particular stage of tasks in Spark. So the scheduler is running as a part of the driver or inside the master node in, in most setups. And when a stage of tasks arrive, the scheduler usually needs to figure out where and how these tasks need to be executed. So to do this, what it does is it first tries to decide which machines that each task needs to be assigned to. To do this, it takes into account, for example, the data locality where the input data is present and how cores need to be fairly shared across all of the computations running in a cluster. And secondly, once it figures out this assignment of location uh, to task, uh, there is some amount of computation that goes on in serializing and sending these tasks out to the various machines in the cluster. Now, if you take a look at what are these overheads when you try to do a benchmark, uh, this is a small micro benchmark that just compares uh, the scheduling overhead. Uh, as we increase the number of machines from four machines to 128 machines, with each machine having four cores. So this is pretty similar in spirit to the Inception V1 graph I was showing you before, with a more detailed breakdown of where the time is going. So the main things we can see here are that the task fetch and the scheduler delay, uh, which are sort of the systems overheads, it increases from less than uh, 10 to 20 milliseconds at the four machine range to around like 150 milliseconds at the 128 machine uh, installation. So the consequence of this is that if you have an iterative workload like the deep learning workloads that Ding was showing before, each iteration we're adding around like 150 milliseconds of overhead to the computation. And especially if the iterations run very fast, this can be a significant part of the overhead of each iteration. So to address this, we apply a, a very simple insight. We look at how the scheduler behaves across iterations of the same job, and we observe that the scheduler actually makes similar decisions across iterations. Or in the other words, if you have a second iteration come in, the decisions on which tasks go to which machine are often the same decision that it took in the previous iteration. So using the simple insight, we have this uh, idea that we can actually reuse scheduling decisions across iterations, and we don't need to perform all of this uh, costly uh, scheduling decision overhead that was being run for every iteration in the existing scheduler. So we did this as a part of a research project called Drizzle in Berkeley. And uh, we built this up as a standalone project, and then we worked with the uh, big DL developers uh, at Intel in order to integrate it with the big DL framework. And the two main uh, techniques that we use uh, in Drizzle are one is to uh, pre-schedule reduced tasks, and two is to group schedule iterations of computation. And I will walk through both of these techniques in a little bit of detail now. So let's start with the pre-scheduling reduced tasks. And the pre-scheduling reduced tasks is useful for uh, breaking the sort of barrier that exists between map and reduced stages uh, when you run a computation in Spark today. So what happens right now is that when we try to, for example, exchange data between the map and the reduced stages, uh, the data from the map side is written out to the local disk. And a message is sent back to the centralized driver or scheduler saying, this is the size and location of my map outputs from each mapper that runs inside the system. Now, when the reducers are being launched, the scheduler puts in enough metadata on where it should be fetching its output from. And that's how the existing shuffle implementations uh, work out. 
Now note that the scheduler is not, or the master node is not involved in the data transfer itself, and the data transfer actually happens between the various nodes in the cluster, uh, but it's only the metadata that is flowing through, through the master node right now. So the metadata here is describing the uh, shuffle data location, and the data fetch is then happening between the nodes, uh, uh, between the worker nodes that are present in the system. Now, with pre-scheduling reducers, we sort of invert this, where we say that why should we schedule reducers after we complete the mappers? Why can't we actually do this beforehand? So what we instead end up doing here is that we pre-schedule these reduced tasks to run on some worker nodes. And when we are launching these mappers, we now can encode the metadata of where the output from the mapper should go uh, when the map tasks finish. So what this means is that when the map tasks finish, you don't need to have any coordination with the centralized driver or the master node, and that they can directly trigger these reduced tasks to start running when the map tasks have finished executing. So this means that we have removed this level of uh, coordination or synchronization that was present between the map task and the reduced task while performing a shuffle. So this explains the pre-scheduling uh, reduces part of our uh, of Drizzle. And the second part that uh, we, we developed was this idea of doing group scheduling. In group scheduling, what we do is, instead of launching one iteration of computation at a time, we actually group together multiple iterations and launch computations for all of the iterations in the group at the same time. So for example, in this case, if our group size is two, you see that all of the tasks that belong to both of these iterations are sent to the workers for execution, and the workers have enough uh, coordination or logic built in in them to trigger the tasks when their inputs are ready and when the previous iteration has completed. So as you can see, as we increase the group size, we are now reducing the overhead because the scheduler is only involved once at the end of every group of iterations. Uh, but this does come with some trade-offs in terms of fault tolerance and scheduling, where uh, no, uh, all of these operations now only happen at these group boundaries instead of at these iteration boundaries like they used to happen before. So how much does this help? So this is the same micro-benchmark that I showed you before that showed the scheduling delay uh, go up up to like 150 milliseconds or so. And we compare four different settings in this uh, micro-benchmark. So first is the baseline, which is the existing uh, Spark scheduler. Uh, and uh, if you look at the overall time taken, it goes from around like 40 milliseconds to 250 milliseconds from 4 to 128 machines. If we only add pre-scheduling, which was the first technique that I described, we get some benefits. Uh, but it still is around 200 milliseconds or more at the 128 uh, node scenario. But we see that once we add in group scheduling, we get tremendous amounts of benefits uh, from our approach. Uh, this drizzle 10 here refers to having 10 iterations being in a particular group, and then the latency comes down to 50 milliseconds, and it further reduces below that as we go to drizzle with 100 group size. Applying the same techniques to big deal, the overhead for inception v1, it goes down from like around 12% uh, that we had at 512 tasks to less than 1% uh, when we're dealing with drizzle, and uh, we actually apply this to a wide range of models after that. Uh, the benefits that you get depends on the model size and the scale at which your computation is running. So, for example, in Lynette, there was a 15% overhead as we uh, were running on 32 nodes, and with Drizzle group size 10, we were able to effectively reduce almost all of that overhead. There was a more bigger win in the case of CIFAR 10 uh, while running on 32 EC2 nodes, uh, and we also ran this on an ImageNet data set as well. So, in conclusion, uh, deep learning jobs that are executing on Spark are, have some unique characteristics that lend itself to uh, looking at more intensive performance uh, optimizations. A uh, couple of the problems that happen are that there's the, having a single master node or driver can lead to a bottleneck both in terms of parameter exchange and in terms of scheduling. In this talk, we presented two techniques that we have developed uh, that can uh, overcome these problems, first through doing peer-to-peer -peer all reduce, and the second through doing coarse grain scheduling and alleviating scheduling overheads. Uh, our work is open source. Uh, there is uh, a, a lot of content uh, on, the, uh, uh, drizzle, uh, on, the, uh, on the Drizzle page, which lists uh, out our paper that describes this in more detail. And the integrated version of BigDL with Drizzle is available on the BigDL uh, open source repository. Uh, and uh, that concludes my talk for today. And with that, we'll take uh, any questions. Thank you. All right, if people have questions, please come up to the microphone here. We have it prepared already. Uh, 
Hi. Um, I'm a little bit new to some of this technology, so I'm not familiar with Big DL. Uh, I'm assuming it's an alternative to TensorFlow, is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, well, yeah, it has a comparable performance with TensorFlow on GPU. All right. Okay, and uh, so I guess my question then would be about Drizzle. Have you applied Drizzle to TensorFlow? Have we applied Drizzle to TensorFlow? So the techniques we developed in Drizzle uh, were, were, were based around the Spark execution model. Okay. TensorFlow has a slightly different execution model where they have these long running uh, workers and then they perform uh, you know, data flow across them. Uh, so it's not directly applicable, but uh, a similar notion of trying to measure uh, scheduling and overheads and fault tolerance trade offs is also relevant in such a system. Uh, we haven't yet looked at that though. Okay, I, I just came from a talk about TensorFlow over Spark. So oh, I see, got it. So got I was kind of curious about Got that. it, yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Again, I'm also new to Big Deal. Uh, do you, you talked about uh, these uh, scheduler tasks and all those things. Uh, how does, have you guys tried it over a combination of CPUs and GPUs in a cluster or it's always over CPU clusters? Um, actually, Big Deal only support run on CPU servers and when we um, do the comparison, we run Big Deal on CPU and run TensorFlow on GPU. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, if you run TensorFlow on CPU, Big Deal is much faster than TensorFlow. Uh, and also, the performance scheduler uh, is it sort of flexible enough to uh, move around the different inputs and outputs? Because doesn't it depend on which input goes to which output across the different workers? Uh, Can I sort of is is the framework flexible enough uh, to? Uh, map different, uh, to modify inputs and outputs so that which I can map to different workers? Uh, or should I be doing it at the first stage itself? So the, the, the scheduling framework is general enough that the, uh, it, the task can access inputs at any locations. It's, it takes an existing Spark DAGs and like operates on it. Uh, the, the, the only thing that we had to uh, change was um, you have to use these shuffle operations for the DAG to be fully developed, and if you run a count or if you run like a collect in Spark, that forces all the computation to come to the, the master node, and at that point you kind of apply some of these optimizations. Um, but otherwise, it's, it, it is pretty uh, general uh, in, all, in other senses. Yeah. So two two questions. So one one is so uh, can 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 we apply this technique? Uh, for the uh, data parallel without the parameter server? Uh, in Big Deal, we perform um, data parallelism, and uh, the model is stored on each worker. And um, during the training, the, each worker will load part, one partition of the data and uh, perform the training. I think it's also widely used in other deep learning frameworks. Okay. Uh, other question is uh, uh, about the Drizzle. So, uh, is there any plan uh, to contribute a uh, Spark master, uh, master Spark? Yeah. So we have an open uh, Jira that describes uh, the architecture of this. Uh, so one of the ideas behind uh, doing this work on Big DL and also, for example, giving this talk is to uh, is to build more requirements or applications that will require these scheduling changes. Uh, so as you might expect, making big scheduling changes in Spark is, uh, is, 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 is risky and it requires a lot of backing um, applications to do it. And uh, so if you have any comments and if you want to see this feature, we'd appreciate uh, any support that you can give on the Jira and on the community mailing list. Okay, thank you. All right, if there are no more questions, let's give our speakers one more round of applause.